the Sunday bomb blast opposite Taraba State University was a fault in a chain of explosion that have rocked Jalingo, the state capital, this year. While the scene of the incidents has already been sealed off, the effect caused damages on some commercial stores and residential buildings in the area. Some victims that escaped by whiskers shared their experience with TVC News. Not okay, yesterday I was here drinking beer. And nowhere we just hear a big sound of something that like explodes like this. I sit down for the front of my house. I just hear boo, cover. So I didn't see whether I'm tired or not. So later on, at that moment, my whole heart ceased like that. From the beer parlor, we think they are targeting, but a tough government official usually come and pass a time in the beer parlor. The thing just lifts me up and throw me on the ground. I saw sand and dust and smoke around me like earthquakes. I saw storm like this. I was shouting, Jesus, Jesus. Nobody was close to leave me. But later on, I saw somebody that just raised, showed, give me his hand and bring me out of that place. The district head of Nokia says the youth will be mobilized to join security agents to identify suspicious strangers in their locality. He also cautioned residents to be more security conscious. We will try to see that uh, our youth, they will be walking around to see we intensify our security so that things of this nature will not repeat itself again. <laughs> This is not the first time that students will be out to protest against the continued closure of public universities in Nigeria. For many hours, students displayed their displeasure over the ongoing strike by members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, by blocking a section of the access route to the Muritala Muhammad International Airport, Lagos. The situation caused gridlock along the axis as vehicular movement in and out of the airport was stalled. The rain could not stop the protesting students from expressing themselves as they demand to be part of further negotiations between government and their striking lecturers. They just meet themselves, disagree, agree, and go for going forward, it is the student that is being affected. So if they are responsible in their dealings, if they know they are not hiding anything, we have student bodies, we have NAS. Okay, NAS now is taking this struggle up. We are protesting every now and then. So what stopped them from including NAS in their negotiation? By September 28th, they will start their campaign. And that is our biggest fear. If they are not starting their campaign, they did not take education serious. What will happen when the campaign starts? It's quite appalling. I entered school 2016 December. This is 2022 September. I'm still in school. And students, the students are paid out rent in January. It's about to expire, which means they are praying to have to spend extra money. It's, 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 I don't even know how to explain it, but it just shows that they do not take us seriously when it comes to the education sector. We are not asking for too much. End the ASU strike and fund education in Nigeria. It's a continuous protest until they reach a resolution for us to resume back to our campuses. Mr. Omar Madike, a.k.a. Evans, and Victor Aduba were arraigned in 2017 on a four-counts charge of kidnapping Mr. Ahamunu. The prosecution had presented four witnesses, including the victim, to testify in its case. Both defendants testified in their defense and presented no witnesses. The victim had testified in court how he was kidnapped by armed men dressed in army uniform, one of whom he identified as Evans and how he was freed after two months upon paying the ransom. The victim also told the courts that he again identified Evans at the police station upon his arrest and that the defendant even apologized to him for the acts. The judge held that the witness' ability to recollect who he saw wasn't discredited and that it was unlikely he could have forgotten the identity of his abductors within that interval. In upholding Evans' confessional statement while in custody, the court dismissed his allegations of torture by the police and held that there were no bruises or marks on him during his video interview with the police. The judge held that the interrogation done by a police surgeon, Julio Secundayo, was, quote, skillfully extracted as Evans was seen duly cautioned before the questioning and that he asked the officer to write down his statement for him.
which he then signed after it was read out.